In a previous video, I talked about how we usually model an atom, or a system of only atoms. But of course, what we usually study is a system of molecules. And they can be very complex molecules, like for example proteins. Now, it's true, a molecule is nothing more than a series of atoms interacting through covalent bonds. But that's not usually how we are going to model them in, in order to have them working inside a molecular dynamics or Monte Carlo simulation. That's because they are quite complex. We don't only have the, bond, the covalent bonds that are quite often modeled as harmonic bonds, but they, we also have bending, torsional, uh, we can have stiffer molecules, softer molecules, and of course we can also have the problem that we have quite complex molecules but we want to simplify the calculation by not considering all atoms explicitly so it will be a approximated evaluation of the molecule. It really depends on what you're doing, how you're doing it, there are plenty of things so you will have some potentials that will depend on the orientation, that will depend on distances or in, of internal degrees of freedom in the molecule, then on the movement of the molecule. They, they can be very, very complex. Then we also have the fact that the molecules may have a dipolar momentum, they may be charged, they may have both a charge and a dipolar, three-polar, multipolar momentum. And these are all things we have to consider. And they could also be polariz polarizable. They could have a polarizability. So, and in some situations we might want to have it inside our system, to have a polarizable system. And there are a series of tricks that are used, like for example, in a molecule. Uh, yeah, that's a completely fake molecule. Uh, we could put some uh, partial charges on the covalent bonds, on the atoms, they could be plus or minus, whatever, or even around the atoms. And depending, they could be fixed and move with the atom or the bond they are stick with, or they could also move in this way be polarizable. So they could be like particles that do only interact via electric uh, charge. And these are all very complex things. And yes, you could make your own potentials and your own functionals and thus your own force fields. And in some situations you have to. And that's quite complex because you might do it theoretically, you might take some empirical data, but that's not a, a something th simple. And in fact, Quite often, it's much better to use a force field that has already been done. There are plenty of them, like for example, amber for the proteins. A force field is nothing more than a series of functionals that describes a series of atoms, of bonds, of, of bendings, etc, 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 that you can already use as they are, as long as you are using a kind of molecule that is supported. Different force fields will have different grades of complexity. So you could have a not polarizable one, a polarizable one, you can have one that absolutely doesn't consider charges except for point charges, or another one that at least considers the polar interactions. Uh, you could use a coarse grained one if you want to consider a big complex molecule as something easier because you're not really inter too interested in the small things happening inside, or you can use a very very complex and detailed one. There are plenty of them. You can simply download them and use them. And there are actually three kinds of force fields. So force field of class 1, they have an harmonic, uh, they model the covalent bonds as harmonic springs. So you will have on the bonds something like k q minus q zero or the length minus length zero call it as you like also the bending is usually done in a harmonic way 
So on the angles you will again have some kind of constant and you will have theta minus theta zero square plus a more complex expression for the torsions. So uh, for the torsions we will have a more complex expression that depends on the cosine. It's, it's a co combination of cosines. And then of course you will have the non-bounded part that will have the Coulomb interaction plus something that models the Leonard Jones. Yeah, that's not exactly as you're used to see Leonard Jones, but that can be considered sigma to the power of 12 times epsilon, that's sigma to the power of 6 times epsilon, if we want to see it exactly as Leonard Jones. The, the, so that's the class 1 force fields. Uh, I forgot to put the 1 half before, so I put them here. And actually here would be better to write it in a more... In a way you would find it more commonly. So R, IJ minus R0. And that's a zero. So harmonic bonds, harmonic bending, that's a bit strange torsional part, and then the non-bond part. Sometimes we will have also a special interaction for one four non-bounded interactions. But now I haven't written them here now. Then we can have the class two force fields where we don't only have the harmonic, we can also have some cubic, so anharmonic contributions on the bendings and the stretchings and some off-diagonal uh, corrections for bending and stretching. The out-of-diagonal corrections will look something like stretching, stretching, one, two, two, three, That's for the stretching stretching and then we have also the bending stretching. Okay, one, two, three, one, two. So, as I said, we have oh, the non-harmonic that I haven't written because they're simply cubical forms contribution for stretching and bending and this out of diagonal ones. And we actually also have the class 3 force fields where we have a better modeling of the charges, the dipolar interactions and polarizability. So in general a more accurate description of the electrostatic interactions. And as I said, they include polarizability. So, as long as you don't find yourself in the situation in which you have to create your own force field, you can use them, and even though you might need to create it for one atom, so for example for a metal inside a protein, you can st still only do it for that atom, you don't have to recreate everything. But remember that it's dangerous to take parts from one force field and put it in another one, because they're being thought to work all together properly, and they could not, they're not transferable usually. So of course pay attention to what you're doing. I hope you enjoyed the video. All the sources and the materials I used to do it are written in the description below. And here is some more content for you. But wait, don't click on it yet. First remember to leave a feedback in the comment section to let me know what you think about it. Like, subscribe, follow me on social media, links in the description. And if you would like to support the channel, consider to donate on Patreon. Again, link in the description below. See you next time. I'm Maurice Karnbrook for The Computational Chemist.